the next three days, I'm attending the Special Forces Assessment and Selection, one of the most intense and grueling processes in the entire U.S. military, with less than a 26% success rate. No civilian has ever been allowed to do this before. What you're about to see is just a small piece of what it takes to be part of the United States Army's most elite unit, the Green Berets. Warriors who specialize in unconventional tactics to accomplish even the most dangerous of missions. And in order to survive this, there's only one person I can rely on. They will work together as a team to carry heavy objects weighing over 100 pounds through loose sand and long distances. Overcome 28 obstacles on a course stretching over 1.5 miles. Walk 15 miles through brush and swamp. Conduct 12 hours of land navigation through the blazing heat and the dead of night. This will not be easy. Let's go, candidates. Drop your rucks. Welcome to Camp McCall. First order of business, turn in your phones. From this point forward, you'll be known as a roster number. Staff Sergeant Galdonez, you'll be roster number 178. Austin, you'll be roster number 530. All right, follow me. This will be your room. You have MREs right here. You're expected to have three MREs each inside of your ruck. That does not count towards your weight. After a brief tour of Camp McCall, we were shown to our barracks. All right, candidates, find a bunk. This will be your home for the next three days. Recommend you get as much sleep as possible. You're gonna need it. Remember, we're always watching you out here. Have a good night. Get ready, be good. We started out with a PT test, which is an initial exam that candidates must pass in order to start the full SFAS, which is an entire three week process. The initial PFE is a standard test consisting of push-ups, a plank, pull-ups, and a two-mile run. Throughout the entirety of this process, neither candidate will be given any information on their performance for one simple reason. We don't want them to think they're doing really good and hold back, and we don't want them to push any harder than they would normally push. And at the end, we will give them all the necessary feedback they need to improve. Even though there are minimums that must be met, everything is done at max effort. Roster 530 had you at 41. Get set, be good. This experience is not about passing or failing. It's about pushing through, enduring the hardships, and communicating effectively as a team. What we normally do in 21 days is essentially gonna be boiled down to, into three days. The metric that we used to evaluate Austin Alexander and Sarn Galdonez was the, by using the eight RSOF core attributes. 32 more seconds, you got it. Now you're probably wondering, what are the eight RSOF core attributes? Unlike most military tests, we're not being evaluated based on our scores. We're being evaluated based on our performance of the following eight attributes. Integrity. Courage. Perseverance. Personal responsibility. Professionalism. Adaptability. Team player. Capability. 33. <sighs> up. One. Up. Up. Two. Up. Nine. Up. Ten. Up. I got you at 14. Next is a two mile run, 10 minutes. You'll run one mile down this road where you'll find a proctor a mile out. You'll turn around at him and run back to here. I'll call out your time as you're coming through the line. Be good! Only two miles, baby. I'm gonna try to push for six and a half, okay? Doing great. Easy for you to say. I tore this hamstring twice last year and it put me out of the running for a long time. I mean, when I started back, I was running 12, 13 minute miles and it was really tough for me. But over the last few months, putting those sticks in the fire each and every week running made me better at running again. You got it. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. 35, 36, All the way 47, through. 48. Very good. I'm going back. And I'll get you my teammate. Let's go home, baby. Let's go. Strong finish. Almost there, another 30 seconds. 7, 8, Let's go all the way through. Three! Oh, that's cold. Oh. How'd the run feel? Felt as good as the run feels. 
That's a good explanation. Happy Tuesday. Even if you don't hit the standard, like you are constantly being assessed. You never know whenever those standards might change, but your effort doesn't. So just keep going. Well, uh, I've been kind of nervous about this event. How do you feel? I'm confident about obstacle course. I think it's one of probably going to be one of my best events. I wish I could say the same. A good strategy, in my opinion, would be like me getting on your shoulders. Okay. Okay. Candidates, welcome to the Nasty Nick. You've already received your brief. You will have two attempts to negotiate each obstacle. All right, you're always being assessed, so make sure you give it your best while you're out there. Go. The famous Nasty Nick obstacle course is one of the longest and toughest obstacle courses in the whole U.S. military. It's part of the Special Forces heritage and is a rite of passage for any U.S. Army Special Forces candidate. As we start the Nasty Nick, I'm trying to preserve my energy because there are over 20 obstacles, each getting harder and harder. Watch the yellow, remember no hands. A couple of things to keep in mind here. We're not allowed to touch anything yellow. We are allowed to fell a certain number of obstacles, but we have no clue what that number is. Don't look up, just look. Don't look up. Don't look down, Lolita. Don't look down, you got it. Yep. You already on it. The hardest part's done. Good job. I'll go, I'll go first. Okay. Oh. It's a long tunnel. I like the smells out here, very floral. It smells like rain. Tell people get it made on this one. A lot of spiders in here. No use to the ladder. You go, almost there. Three more feet, three more feet. Come on. You gotta make it to the top of right here. Of where? Right here. Two more pulls, strong pulls. Good job. We're just barely halfway through the obstacle course and my legs feel like lead. I'm totally spent and I can't even think about the rest of the day. I'm just putting one foot in front of the other, and that's all I can do. Focus on the obstacle, not the ground. Two minute nap. And you're gonna stand up and walk across the rungs. I'm bleeding sweat. It's fine, it's fine, Will. This ain't nothing. At this point, I'm drenched in sweat. My forearms are nearly fried and the obstacles just keep coming. Lo is struggling too, but she's hanging in there. It's been 45 minutes and the end is nowhere in sight and I'm questioning if we can even make it all the way through. And then out of nowhere, I see the biggest obstacle of the entire course. Come on, you're f***ing airborne, you jump out of planes. Come on, I say nothing. Just keep climbing, just keep climbing. Come on, close the gap, that's easy. It's a point. Just gotta get over and down. Let's go, buddy. Good job. Take your helmets off. Back into the water. Colin? Yeah, go ahead. 81 degrees out here, 83% humidity. Good job. After the Nasty Nick obstacle course, we headed out to the land navigation field for a practice run before the actual event. 
We have three hours to get this land nav done. Unknown distance, I don't even know how long it is. Maybe 10 miles, maybe 12 miles, maybe five miles, six miles, but we're doing it. Now I know what you're thinking. Austin, do you even know how to land nav? Well, no. Before we could begin this whole journey, Staff Sergeant Galdones and I received a full day of instruction before we even got out to Camp McCall. We learned about foot care, land nav, compassing, and area familiarization. We even learned how to tie knots and lashings, which is what we will use for the final and most challenging evolution, team event. Ah. How's that? Nope. How's that? Nope. Nope. I got all day. I don't. How's that? Nope. How about mine? Yep. That's good. Can you show me how to do it? Made a little P, pull it through, hold this in my fingers, thread it through, let go of the finger, tighten it down. Super easy. How's that? Yep. Good enough. Thank you very much. Anyways, back to today. Congratulations, candidates. You've successfully found four out of four points. At this time, it's your decision if you want to stay out here tonight or you want to go back to the barracks. Choice is yours. I'm just going to go to sleep right here. <laughs> right there. Yeah. We'll I'm stay. pretty tired. Just grab your stuff, guys, and move over there into the wood line. You're going to see a little corral over there, and that's where you guys will stay tonight. Ugh. How you feeling? <laughs> like that moan that you just let out? <laughs> Ugh. It's actually kind of nice. I haven't slept out in the woods in a long time. I'm away from technology, away from everything, and it's just kind of really relaxing out here. At least I have my water and my MREs, and I'm good to go. See you guys tomorrow morning very, very early. Picture this, it's the middle of the night. You are deep into the woods in an unfamiliar area. It's cold, it's wet, you can't see. You haven't eaten in who knows how long. Danger could be anywhere. Spiders, snakes, bears, enemies. You're walking towards a specific point on a map knowing that when you get to it, there will be another point after that and another one and another one and another one. For Lo and I, it's our biggest challenge yet. But for a Green Beret, it could be their only chance for survival in the real world. There are no trophies waiting for us at the end of this competition because the only person you're competing against is yourself. Right at dawn, it's uh, 5.37. Rucks are heavy, knees weak, palms are sweaty. Let's get moving. We hadn't even made it to our first point yet, and I was already mentally and physically depleted. We'd been rucking for around five hours through the thick forest. It was wet, muddy, and my feet were numb. We have 900 more meters to go until our first point. The ruck's heavy. See this right here? This is an African lion's mane. You wanna take a bite? I'm just kidding. Don't eat random mushrooms. All right, point one. Now, so I made it to the first steak. Right now it is very early, very sweaty. I'm gonna take the ruck off. I'm gonna rest for a little. I'm really hoping that we're done going through water. Oh my gosh, you see that? That's a lot of water. I think that's nothing but water. We have to cross three places of water. The water will be up to waist level. <sighs> I don't know about you, but it's time for some elbow macaroni. I'm hungry. I feel like I've been through the roof. Snacking on bugs the entire yeah. walk. Yeah. Peanut butter. Peanut butter and jelly. Oh, I got some bread. These are better than any, any MRE I've ever had. Got the entree, lemon poppy seed, pound cake. Mm. I love I this. Like More candy. The MRE gods. Cheese spread with jalapenos, vegetable crackers, beef stick, some good old gum. All right, y'all, if you're watching the video and you're enjoying it, I ask if you hit the like button. Come join the fun. It's a lot of fun. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, I ask that you hit the like button. It's free. Tap the like button. 
Hit it, it's free. These are good though. That you never see them eating on reality shows because it's not attractive. Really hope you don't show me eating. With two points left, it was back to the ruck, and just as we suspected, water. The water actually felt nice, but it did make the rucks a lot heavier. You guys are wondering how we're capturing this on footage. Instructors will drop the cameraman three to 400 meters off from where we are, and he will just randomly show up and be like, hey, what's up, I'm here, tell me what's going on. That's how we, we're capturing this footage. Luckily, point two was just beyond the lake, and point three was a few miles after. <sighs> point three. Man, I've never taken Google Maps for granted again. It's about 95 degrees. I'm too scared to take my boots off and look at my feet. After point three, we made our way back to Camp McCall in preparation for the final day, the team event. The team event is a series of tasks that candidates must accomplish within a set amount of time, including carrying heavy loads, assembling apparatuses, and using skills learned during training, all while rucking from one point to the next. Morning, candidates. Good morning, Good morning Sergeant. All right, here's gonna be your equipment for the day. Your time starts now. All we're given is a map and a point. It's our job to navigate to that point, complete the mission, and advance in a timely manner. There's minimal interaction with the cadre. They're only there to observe and evaluate our performance. All right, go ahead and read that. Team will low carry all equipment along the designated route. If team is not moving within 30 minutes, team will receive extra equipment. Ammo can can must be attached to pole. All right, your time starts now. 6.52. The first apparatus is a 60 pound steel pipe and a 60 pound ammo can. Total weight, 120 pounds. We have to lash the can to the pipes and make sure it's tight so it won't wiggle. We decided to build handles so it was easier to grip, but over an unknown distance, it's gonna get uncomfortable. <laughs> Seven oh eight. Ready? Yep. Yep. It's already slipping, man. Austin. What's the strategy, man? Maybe we go center. <clears throat> yep. Can we move this a little bit towards you? All right, hold on a second, hold on, hold on. My hips can't last. Am I just too short? Okay, hey so. Hey man, we can just hold it with two hands. Yep, hold two hands and then we'll rotate this way. You gotta be prepared for anything and everything when conducting unconventional warfare. This could represent in a buddy, but you gotta get out and you're in an area where there's no vehicles, no helicopters, no medevac. Okay, I gotta go down. Perseverance is really big here. Their ability to endure a tough situation, knowing that it's gonna keep going for a long time, uh, it speaks volume on their character. Oh. You wanna try behind our back? We can try anything. At this point, the lack of sleep and exhaustion from the days before, combined with the way and unknown distance ahead of us, is turning this into an impossible task. Because of the height difference, I was carrying the pole higher, which caused me to drop the equipment several times and Cadre was not happy about this. Get this filled with uh, dirt rocks, whatever you can, no pine straw, bring it back to me. Uh, you got five minutes. You guys can take turns carrying it, it's up to you. But now this is a, a new addition to your equipment that needs to make it to your final point. I'll carry it. Who's gonna carry the boats? That bag of rocks must have weighed at least 40 pounds, and let me tell you, I was feeling it. We were so far behind on time, there was no way we would be able to complete the mission. And because of that, Cadre now has control of our work to rest ratio with 50 paces on and 30 seconds off. Once you pick up this equipment, you're gonna move out 50 paces. And then when you set it down gently, 30 seconds of rest. At 30 seconds, you will continue to move. Do not set the equipment down until
Ty, I tell you. Go. One, two, two three, three, eight, eight seventeen, seventeen, eighteen. 40, 41, 42, come on, 8 more, 3, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. <sighs> 25 seconds left. I just dropped that palm on my toe and I'm feeling it. I'm scared to even take off my boot right now. Come on, we gotta go. During these events, your body temperature rises so high that heat casualties are a real threat. It's important to constantly cool yourself and maintain as low of a temperature as possible because once your body temperature goes up, it's very difficult to bring it back down. That's why Lo and I were very excited when the cadre pulled us aside by the lake. We were instructed to drop gear and to take a dip, which was the boost of morale that we both needed. What day is it? March says Thursday. July 29th, June 29th, or is it May? June, August. I don't know. We've been at it for about Longer than 48 hours. Yeah, I'd say 72 at least. You think there's snakes in here? Yeah, they got copperhead, cottonhead, water moccasins all over North Carolina. All right, candidates, you trying to be Green Berets or Navy Seals? Green Berets. Green Berets. All right, get the out of the water. Shortly after our much needed dip in the lake, we carried the apparatus for a few more meters and just when I thought we were about to dry off, here comes another surprise. You guys smell a little bit. So we're gonna do you and me a favor and do a little personal hygiene, all right? Hey Austin, why are you doing this? I just, I love to challenge myself. Like if you're just going through life and you're not constantly challenging yourself or trying to achieve something, it gets very boring and you don't really have anything to look forward to. What about you? Why are you doing this? Do you get voluntold? They told me that I had an option to just go and do this experience and be the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. So immediately I jumped on it like the army preaches, be all you can be. So why wouldn't I? Very true. Back, crushed, traps, destroyed, yep. feet, kind of messed up. Soaked. Like, we've been through four days of like a mini exposure to SFAS, Special Forces Assessment and Selection. Mm -hmm. The actual selection is 21 days. That's freaking crazy. These Green, Green Beret candidates are putting themselves through a lot to become Green Berets. This, this has got to be one of the toughest things I've ever, I've ever attempted. Did you train for it? Not really, I did not ruck. I've only rucked like two or three times in my life. One of the times I actually attempt the Army Ranger 12 mile ruck test. If you guys haven't seen it, be sure to click right here and check it out. It's a YouTube thing. See those, I guess those are from past soldiers who have done this right here, those bags right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you thought the first apparatus was awkward and heavy, wait until you see this one. Time starts now. Let's make the little sear. You know what? We should tie these together. What if we move this so that we can put tires on it? Oh, that's a good idea. We're given five ammo cans, five poles, four tires, and a bunch of rope. Each ammo can weighs 112 pounds. Our mission is to build some kind of apparatus that can carry all this weight. As usual, we have no idea how far we have to go. All right. Let's get Don't moving. <sighs> Push forward, three, two, one. Push. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Anywhere. Drop on three. One, two, three, drop. All right, candidates. Why isn't your apparatus moving? The tires are wobbly. There's about a thousand pounds of weight. These tires need to be straight. Let's lash them. Unfortunately, our first design was not even moving. The tires were too wobbly and too far apart. So we broke it down and started from scratch. This time, we put the wheels closer together and made sure the lashings were tighter. All right, three, two, one. Oh yeah, let's go baby. Watch the roll down. Even though we were able to get the apparatus moving, the tires would wiggle off. And in order to put them back on, I had to take every ammo can off of the apparatus, put the wheels back closer together, and then put the ammo cans back on. Drop. After doing that a few times, it was getting heavy. It's off again. Oh, my bicep's about to tear. For real? No, I don't know. Lift. Push forward. <sighs> Drop. All right, candidates, remember we discussed earlier about dropping the apparatus. You guys do it one more time. I'm going to have to have you guys fill up on these bags, right? 
Yes, sir. We're gonna take them off again. Worst case scenario, will die. Seems like we got some decent medics out here though, so I don't think I'm gonna die. Why do you guys always put them out halfway? I don't want them to scrub the inside of this metal bar. So how quickly are you guys losing your wheels? About every 15 feet. So if you put them in, how long would it take for them to? Maybe 20 feet. Three, two, one. That's as far as I can go in. All right, good. Yeah. It's like heavier. Try to try to get it out on the, on the side. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, drop it. Don't. I mean, don't drop it. Let's see if I can do it just for the fuck of it. I probably won't be able to. So just don't make fun of me. At this time, you completely failed to move the apparatus. What I'm gonna have you guys do is push this apparatus off to the side of the road, break it down, put like items with like items. Even though in that moment I felt like a failure, I ultimately knew that what really mattered was that we persevered and pushed each other beyond what we thought was possible. And that's what kept me going. That was the toughest part, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. I was not expecting that. Those tires kept coming off. I was trying to channel my frustration into positive energy. Almost done. Doesn't matter if we pass or fail. I'm honored to be here with you. And I appreciate you going through this with me. Honestly, I don't think that I'd want to do this with anybody else either. Really? Stop smiling. <laughs> like sorry. I gave you a compliment. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll stop. We won't put this in the video. <laughs> At times I just felt like you were just carrying more weight than me. It was something I definitely got in my head about, but you were always there. You always had my back and I appreciate it. Of course. Candidates, good afternoon. My name is uh, Brigadier General Bo Pair. I am the Commanding General of the John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and School. Thank you for putting yourselves into this challenge and uh, taking on this assessment and selection program, albeit abbreviated. As you know, we assess you through the eight Army Special Operations Forces attributes, and your cadre here will give you uh, feedback based on those attributes. All right, starting with perseverance, Though you guys did struggle with the Nasty Nick, your ability to keep pushing shows your mental and physical toughness. Even during some of the team events, right? You guys struggled, you guys came together, kept pushing. Not once did you guys ask to quit or for anything to be cut. Uh, your professionalism, you guys had a positive attitude not only towards each other, but to every single cadre that was involved. So that doesn't go unnoticed. As far as courage, right? We talked about some of your fears with the obstacle course before we started, right? Fear of heights. You know, it did show a little bit. Neither one of you backed down from a single obstacle. And team player, all day today was nothing but you two working together, problem solving, failing, and then continuing to figure out what it's gonna take to get the job done. Capability. Uh, the land navigation itself is very difficult, but you guys were able to use past experiences and past uh, knowledge on the uh, topic in order to get through that event. Definitely showed adaptability during the team event. You guys had a broken apparatus initially. You guys noticed your, what was deficient on it and you guys went ahead and made that course correction. Of course, the apparatus is, it, itself was unable to be moved very far without having to make some corrections on it, but that adaptability was something I was really um, keyed in on. 
Now personal responsibility, throughout the course you guys maintained your equipment, that's very vital as you guys saw during the land navigation. You guys had your maps at all times, your, your rifles and your, and your rucks. And I commend you for that. Last but not least, uh, integrity. You guys stuck together, you know, showing that loyalty to each other. Specifically during the land navigation, you guys were trustworthy, not crossing the roads or running the roads when you, when you could have. Instead, you guys took the, uh, you guys went through the draws, which I commend you for. Well, thank you. At this time, I'll turn it over to General Bopair. You have all the attributes to come back and be successful at the full Special Forces Assessment and Selection Program. And we look forward to welcoming you back when you make the decision to that. The one thing I will tell you is preparation matters. So you are physically and mentally prepared for the rigors of a full assessment and selection. Thank you. Good job, guys. Here's your phones. Thank Picture. you very much. Yeah, absolutely. 347 missed calls. Good job. Two of those are from me.